Continuing with the topic of unions, I want to talk about the concept of anonymous unions. What are them and how can we make use of them? So picture this issue. I want a data type that can store a simple float, right? Just one 32 bit float. But sometimes I want it to be able to store more than that. I want it to be able to store 64 bit uh, floats and or doubles for that matter. Um, how can we achieve that inside the same data type? Well, we can do so using the concept of anonymous unions. So here we can uh, first create our struct. So remember the uh, notation to create a struct. We have type dev struct, then uh, let's call it custom, custom float. And I'm going to also add a custom float name here. And in here, I am actually going to create a union, just simple, plain old union without even giving it a name. As you'll notice, we don't have anything in here. And inside this union, I'm going to have two values, two uh, variables, so to speak. We have float, uh, just value. And then we're going to have a double value extended, let's say. So how does this actually allow us to store both a 32 bit float and a 64 bit double? Because really we have two variables here inside a union, but since this is a union, remember both are actually stored inside the same uh, place in memory, right? So that means that we are storing either 32 bits or 64 bit, but which, which of it is it? That's where uh, the struct comes in. So here we can actually add another member of the struct and say, uh, let's say boolean, actually notice I uh, included std bool.h to have a boolean. And we can say here boolean is extended. And what this will say is either true or false. If it's true, we know that we have to access our double value. If it's false, we have to access our float value. Simple, in, simple as that. And how to make use of it? Very simple. First, let's define one. So custom float CF, just, just a simple uh, acronym there. And I want, first we're going to set CF dot is extended to be false. So I want just 32 bits this time. And then what we can do is just say CF dot value and give it whatever value we want here. Let's say 12.5, right? And that would actually be stored inside this um, union, right? So, and we, we should only access it through our uh, float. We shouldn't actually access it to our value extended because we know it's not extended due to the Boolean being false, right? And we can create another one here if we want to. Just say cf2 dot is extended equals, let's say true. And then cf2 dot now value extended equals, let's say 0 0.25, right? And if we try to print them, you'll notice we get both of the values in their proper uh, place in memory, right? But if we were to try to actually print the extended version and the non-extended version of each other, so the not right version of them, they would be just garbage values. In this case, we just got uh, zeros. And one more thing, if we actually take a look at the addresses of the value and extended value of our CF1 variable, so I'm just referencing this guy, right? So I'm just taking the address of value extended and value and just using percent %p to print a um, address on the console, we actually get the exact same address in memory. So we know that even though these two are members of a struct, they are basically one on top of each other and at the same, and they are at the same address. So how does that actually help us? Well, in a place where we actually need this type of variable, the cool thing is if we were to actually define an array of these, like an array of custom floats, we could have, for example, 10 custom floats where, I don't know, five of them are just floats 32 bits and the other five are still 64 bit, right? In memory, we're still going to use 64 bit or eight bytes for every single union here, just because that's how uh, that's how memory is allocated for it, right? If I try to say, uh, for example, print f, right? So if I get the size of struct here, which is 16 in our case, 
you'll notice we get it's eight bytes for this guy and it's eight more bytes for this bool because it needs to be aligned right so we actually get like seven uh, empty bytes after it but certainly if you have a union that has a 32-bit value and a 64-bit value you're going to get a 64-bit size inside the memory so the array is going to be unchanged you're still going to have 64 bit for every single um, value even though one might be on 32 bits and the other might be on 64 bits although the advantage is that you can technically take it all together and just copy it straight from memory to another place in memory without worrying about references so this is how anonymous unions work basically you can use them in a struct you can also use them in a union um, but uh, they are basically overlapping places in memory and you can access them just like unions, but without actually defining a union type, which is a bit uh, more readable in my opinion in some cases. So I hope you got something out of this video. Leave the questions down in the comments below or on our Discord server. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye.